And so for that reason, the only reason I say, well, you know, I'd ra- you know, should I have him on my podcast or should I be versus Bart Sibrel or whatever? It's just like, the- mm. and, but that's a good thing. You should yes. ask people to, ask. so when they say the moon landing didn't happen, the only things that they'll usually point to are the, oh, Van Allen belts are too toxic to human being, which again is using the principles of science and physics and physiology. Um, they're using like basic notions of it to try to refute the scientific endeavor itself, which claims yeah. beyond a reasonable doubt that the moon landing did occur. I find that very disingenuous. And, you know, it's also one of those things like I know in America we have our problems and, you know, we've done things in the past that, that aren't great for sure. But yeah. there's so much great that I'm so proud to live in this country oh, for. Yeah. And I think something like getting to the fucking moon is incredible. <laughs> yeah. So when it becomes like mainstream to be like, yeah, that shit never happened, I'm almost like, you know, can we take this anger like out on the CIA or something that's right. like, you know, more deserves it more? And it's always the same people, the anti-Semites, the people that... Are, so no one says, like, you don't hear Candace Owens saying, well, actually, Charles Lindbergh, who's a rabid anti-Semite, uh, we actually removed his name from the San Diego airport. It used to be called Lindbergh Field. It's not called... Oh, Lindbergh. really? It's called San Diego mm-hmm. Airport. Uh, because of his support for Nazi, you know, propaganda, at least himself. He wasn't, like, going around killing Jews. Um, but no one ever said, like, I don't see Candace saying, well, like, there's much less proof that he made it all the way across the Atlantic. And actually, that's much less probable that that he made it across the la- Atlantic with no yeah, other it's help. What, it, it's what gets clicks, though, right. too. That's, like, of that's, course. That's very, of course. that's unfortunate. Now, I want to go back to, though, your point of, of you personally weighing, like, well, can I bring on someone like a Bart Sabrell or something like that? Obviously, I haven't invited on Bart Sabrell. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm not that interested yeah. in it. I've seen his other podcasts before. But, like, I wouldn't say, like, he's not allowed on my show or something like that. Like, if one day I wanted to do it, I'd be like, okay, I'll do it. The difference between you and me, and this is where I see it from your perspective, is I'm not a physicist. Right. I'm a fucking podcaster. I sit <laughs> in an armchair that doesn't even have, have fucking arms on it. You know what I mean? And so when I get these perspectives, it's kind of my job and a part of my being as someone who's not the expert on one set thing sure. to get all the different but perspectives you also have and talk about it. an enormous platform. You're a million subscribers strong just on YouTube. I mean, think of how many other million might be listening to it, might be seeing it, might be seeing clips, um, all sorts of things. You've probably, you know, at some level influenced, you know, a fraction of the Earth's surface that's not insignificant, okay? So you have a much bigger, you know, people that listen to my podcast, very different demographic than listen to your podcast. Yeah, but I, I see what you're saying. But if I get all the perspectives covered and I make it clear that like, hey, I know less about this thing, or maybe I know more about that thing right there. And my right, opinion, that's just asking from... questions. And I'm, sure, you know, but I, look, I don't have a problem. You can invite whoever you want. I can invite whoever I want. <clears throat> it's not been a problem. I mean, I have for people that have problems with those people that I've had on who are legitimate PhDs yes. in, in science, right? So, um, no, I'm not saying you shouldn't have them on. <clears throat> I'm not even saying like I would punch a guy in the face if I saw him like Buzz Aldrin did. I just think. His motives are uh, questionable. Bart, uh, speaking about Bart in particular, that could be fair. I think Terrence legitimately believes that he is being suppressed. I believe that he's been traumatized psychologically by Hollywood, by certain contractual things. I know he's had he's involved in various lawsuits and so forth. I don't think he does himself a favor when he criticizes, challenges people like this guy, Professor Dave. You know, he ch- challenge. You know, he wants to have a duel with him. He wants okay. to have a duel. That's what that's what Dave said on his like podcast. a legal duel under Texas law kind of thing. No, like a gun duel, like a battle. Yeah, yeah, like that's like yeah, a legal yeah. Oh, duel. Under, legal. Okay, I'm pretty I sure know. it's legal yeah, in yeah. Texas. Yeah, <laughs> right. They'd be so, doing that Aaron Burr shit. Yeah, down Dave there. did a video. About that. Um, we should do that in Brooklyn, Joe. See how that works out. <laughs> so you know, uh, I I consider Terrence not to be a friend, but uh, but we've communicated. He's friendly. Let me say, we're yes. friendly. He seems like a really um, good guy. And and again, I think he's he's. I love him as an actor. I think he's done incredible work. <clears throat> And I think he's a genuinely creative individual. And so for that reason, the only reason I say, well, you know, I'd ra- you know, should I have him on my podcast or should I be versus Bart Sibrel or whatever? It's just like there's only so much time in the day. As you said, I'm a professor of physics. I've got, uh, you know, 30 undergraduates. I've got four graduate students. I have to mentor them postdocs. I have to shepherd mm-hmm. their career. Mm-hmm. I spend a day a week on the podcast. Um, for me, it has to be a pleasure. Like if I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, I'm not going to do it. I'm not doing it to so you sell wouldn't, books. So you wouldn't enjoy it if you could talk with someone in a fair way, not to do gotcha shit, but to sit down and have a discussion and in that discussion be able to get across points that are going to maybe win over people who previously would have thought something that you view as objectively wrong. Do you think Bart wrong. is capable of being won over? 
Like, do you think any amount of evidence that... that no, not he, him. Okay, so fine. Not so, him. so you agree with... So we're not debating him. No, I'm debating okay. the people that could be listening. And then like Terrence, for example. Terrence was on Joe Rogan with Eric uh, Weinstein. That after was a that, very good episode. It was a very good episode. Yes. Millions of people saw it. Um, and then afterwards, Terrence went on Patrick Bet David and talked about Eric and how he was, you know, concerned and thought Eric, you know, uh, did some disrespectful things to him. And in fact, it didn't seem like Terrence was all that happy with that, with that interview with, uh, on Joe Rogan. He felt like Eric was, you know, not giving him what he called a peer review. And Eric said, it's not going to be a peer review. I'm not his peer or he's not my peer. Mm. And I think, you know, Terrence can maybe consider that to be, you know, offensive or I don't want to speak for either one of the guys, but, but the point being, um, what's the upside? Like, is it going to be enjoyable to like debate one times one equals two, which I did. So, so here's my alternatives. I did reaction videos about Bart. I, I, saw. I demonstrated mm -hmm. how completely fallacious all of his points are one by one. Maybe I it was about a year ago. If I had to do it over again, maybe I wouldn't be so, you know, snide or condescending or just snarky about it. And I've, I've improved how I do that. Like I did a reaction video to this other guy. Eric Lerner, who claims the Big Bang didn't happen, or this, this channel Astrium, who's like promoting Stephen Hawking in a way that's illegitimate. So, I, and I've moderated that. Or uh, when You're I did a Terrence a lot Howard. on the bone here. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, I did a reaction to Terrence Howard. I went through why is why, why are we one hundred percent sure that one times one equals two? All these different things. Here's the here's the bottom line. You can't um, you can't prove anything in science. Science is not about proving. So I can't prove to you that this thing has a mass of you know 13 grams or whatever it does right i can't prove to you it's, it's going to go down exactly at the because science is not about proof in the way that people use the word proof people use the word proof in one of two different ways mathematical proof which mm -hmm. is certainty which by the way terence howard doesn't believe in right so he's saying that one times one equals two which means he violates all the laws of arithmetic uh, basic laws of rational and irrational numbers. And I went through that. I might show the piano axioms. Uh, there's laws of, of mathematics that, that go through it. It's complicated to show that one plus one equals two and that one times one equals one. It takes hundreds of pages of abstruse math, but you can do it. You can prove what math can prove. There's a certain set of laws that can't be proven. That's Girdle's incompleteness theorem. Um, not far from here in Princeton, New Jersey, Girdle's grave. You can go visit it. One of the we'll greatest. Do it right after. What's that? Yeah, maybe we'll do it. You know, yeah. before lunch. Uh, and so you can prove what's not provable, but in science you can't prove anything. The job of a scientist is not to prove; it's to falsify. Yes, it's to prove things wrong. It's to prove that your claims are incorrect. It's to, uh, but again, I could say this: this meteorite weighs exactly thirteen point zero grams, and I'm wrong. But if I say it's less than a hundred thousand grams, I'm right. That's that's inaccurate. Yes. Sorry, that's accurate, but it's imprecise. Remember what I said before? Yes. Accuracy is how close. It's true it's less than, but who cares? It's not precise. I want to say it's less than 14.007, whatever. But so the point is you can't prove a physical fact about anything. Mm. Therefore, you can't convince someone whose only standard is that I prove something to you because it's not possible. And even for people like Terrence, it's not possible to convince him using laws that are provable, the laws of logic, the axiomatic set theory. I can't prove it to him because he won't accept it. I could say to him, look, the studio promised you if you do another episode of Empire, they'll pay you twice as much as you got last time. And he says, okay, well, two is one plus one. So now it's going to be two times two, which is going to equal to four. And so now you're going to actually pay. No, they would say this is total nonsense. Like, oh, we're not going to pay you, you know, $4 million. We said we're going to pay you $1 million for do one to any, he'll use terms like an action times an action reaction. Is a, yeah. That, and th that, none yeah. of that is mathematical. So therefore. He's an artist. <clears throat> I don't know if it's because he's an artist, to be honest. I, with you. I, I, don't, I, I know artists. I think there's a big piece of that because, like, when he my brother's an artist. When he, he believes one times one is one. But hold on, when he I'm talking about how his brain waves work because one thing I will say about Terrence Howard and listening to him, he's not dumb. Oh no, he's a very smart guy. It's just like he's that one of the top people. I'd like to just you know just spend some time talking about acting with. That doesn't so, mean that he's right, obviously, which is what inventions. we're getting at. But yeah. the way he was thinking about that, where he's like, when does an action? with another action, not have a bigger action. It's like, in theory, that's right. There's no common lexicon. Like if there's this famous, you know, notion it's precursor to the Turing test. You've heard of the Turing test. Of course. Yeah. is artificially generally intelligent. All right, there's another one called like a Chinese room where basically you and I are in two different rooms. We both speak English, but the guy between us is Chinese. And, and he's translating for us from me into English, into Chinese, back to English for you or something like that. Mm -hmm. He doesn't actually have to know anything about what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dark matter. I'm talking about the moon landing. Some guy named Carl, uh, you know, uh, called... Uh, 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 Kurt Girdle and Candace. So, I mean, can you imagine that transcript? Like how wild, <laughs> just, like pick some peasant, you know, some uneducated person who knows the language, who can speak, he's, 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 he's not illiterate or she or whatever um, in China 
put them in the middle, put her in the middle, and they're just translating back and forth. They don't know what the hell we're talking about. They don't have to know what we're talking about. But there's a law, and you can encode everything mathematically and see if it makes sense, uh, you know, in terms of logical consistency. You can't do that with certain things. You can't, again, you can't, you have to have inputs from the external physical world that you and I have to agree upon. Right? If we agreed to meet at a certain time and place, and your definition of time is, is something from like uh, the Nav Choctaw Indians had a different notion of time than, than say, Western you know, colonizers had or whatever, right? So, okay, so when you say we're going to meet at a certain time, like that didn't make sense. It doesn't mean that they're late or not, but you have to give the external inputs. Then we can agree on something. That's calibration. I can't you know, see the actual benefit. Yes, I'll get a lot of views. But judging from YouTube, I mean, first of all, that's not a huge goal of somebody in life, right? Getting views about science. It has to be something I'm proud of, right? I'm very proud yeah. of interviewing, like I said, 21 Nobel Prize winners, top people like Claudia, Duram, and, you know, other friends and people that you and I know together. And I'm putting together sort of a university of people that I wish I'd gone to. Now, there's a, there's a subset of that university which should do critical thinking. And I agree. Sometimes you can have an exceptionally important and, and impactful conversation about the importance of critical thinking. Yes. But how much of my time do I want to spend on that? Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.